Right, okay, welcome back. We're going to finish up this lesson taking a look at the other important features regarding distributed switches, notably backing up the switch as well as rollback. So what are these two features? They're actually kind of related because they both allow us to provide some kind of mechanism in case you make a configuration change where things go sideways and uh, things are not quite right. You want to be able to bring it back to what the configuration was before you made the change. In some ways, this system will do it for you automatically. That's rollback. But here, backing up the switch configuration is a way of doing this manually. Well, right, but why are there two methods? Well, basically, we have one way to protect our VM port groups. That's this. That's being able to back up the entire switch configuration and all the port groups. Meanwhile, rollback is about the management network specifically. If vCenter and the ISIC servers lose their connection because of a configuration change, what rollback does is it makes a change and then it says, oops, that's going to disconnect the network and it will roll it back to the pre-configured state. So that's great. You have these two basic safety nets that are available with the product. Now, backing up the distributed switch does more than just that, but that's really how I see it as a great premise for why this is so useful. Before you make any big changes to port groups, you know, I've seen it happen more than once where somebody makes a configuration and then things stop working. They go, oh dear, what have I just done? Had you made a backup of it before you made the change, you've got that easy way to revert things back to the way they were. It's almost like how you can create snapshots on a VM before you make some big change inside your guest OS, like patching it, for instance. So in any case, what you have here is a uh, couple different capabilities here. Now, we call it backing up the distributed switch, but really what it is, in the user interface, you right-click on the distributed switch and you select Export Configuration. That will export the entire virtual switch. You will be given the option to export the port group right along with that. You can also do the same on a port group as well. Just back up the port group by selecting Export. And then, once you've done that, you've now got a file saved wherever you want to save the file, so now you can actually now restore from that file to replace your, you know, broken distributed switch or broken port group if you need to. If um, you also have this backup of the entire switch, another neat thing you can do is use that as a template-like form to deploy a new distributed switch from this same configuration. So remember, distributed switches, it's all about you know ensuring consistency. What if I want to ensure consistency from distributed switch to distributed switch? Here's a way of doing that. Make an export or a backup of your distributed switch. You can choose whether or not to include all the port groups in that. You might as well include them because, hey, it's useful. You get them there. And then if you now need to deploy a new distributed switch, maybe on this vCenter or even on another vCenter server altogether, you can deploy a new switch or import is what the option is. Import from your, your exported image to deploy a brand new distributed switch and, if you want, all the port groups right along with that. So exporting is basically the concept of making a backup. Making a backup of your switch you can use this to create a template for new switches and to even create a revision control system for your distributed switch configuration. It's a very, very useful process. And then once you have that backup, you've saved it somewhere, maybe for this vCenter or for another vCenter, but it's an external file. You can now use that to restore, basically reset the configuration of a distributed switch that has had some issues. Maybe you made a configuration that's gone awry. You can you know, reset it because you have a backup of it. You've got your built-in safety net. Or you can choose import from the menu to create a brand new switch from your backup, mostly by ensuring you've got a guaranteed consistent template like uh, object for deploying multiple distributed switches with the exact same configuration. So just two different import or two different uh, ways to bring in from your backup. Restore will re reset a switch that has some misconfigurations and import lets us build out a brand new switch from your backup. Now, what's this other feature? Rollback. Rollback is a feature that's built into vCenter and the ESX server, both of them, because of how important it is that the connection between vCenter and all of its ESX servers is maintained. If you make a configuration change on the management network, that would then cause the vCenter and the ESX server to not be able to communicate. That would be a bad thing. I've actually seen that happen too in our different environments. So one thing that rollback does is it monitors that connection. It monitors the configuration that you're you're implementing. And if the configuration you implement causes a disconnect, it will simply say, whoops, I'm going to roll it back. Now, there's actually two ways of doing this. There is automatic rollback, which is essentially being driven by vCenter server. There's also direct console rollback as well. 
In fact, if you turn rollback off, which actually can be disabled if you like, then you can manually roll back a NeoSix server as well. That's through the Direct Console user interface. So there's basically two different kinds of rollback. There's host level rollback, and then there's also distributed switch level rollback. Like I said, the two systems are monitoring. The vCenter server is monitoring the configuration changes you might be making, and the ISIC server is monitoring the changes you might be making. Now, it's all depending on where you're making the configuration change. If you're using the vSphere client to manage a distributed switch, that's vCenter rollback. In fact, vCenter rollback is specifically managing a distributed switch configuration. The ESX host rollback, on the other hand, this is if somebody's logged into the ESX server, either through the direct console or logged into the ESX server's command line. In that case, the ESX server is watching the commands that you're typing in and seeing what changes you're making. If that causes a disconnect, it will then roll back the configuration. This applies to both a distributed switch as well as for a standard switch. So that is an interesting distinction. Host level rollback, for changes you make on the host, they actually apply the rollback applies to both standard switches and for distributed switches. Whereas the vCenter, or as you know, it's actually officially called the distributed switch rollback. That's where you're making the change using the vSphere client while logging into vCenter. It's enabled by default. You can disable it under a vCenter server's advanced settings. It's not really recommended to be disabled. However, it, in, it can be useful, especially in maybe a lab environment, or maybe in your lab environment, the vCenter server or in case the ESX server actually has just one network adapter. And that's unusual, right? An ESX server with just one network adapter. But if it does have just one network adapter and you're wanting to move everything from a standard switch over to a distributed switch, that's a process that's going to cause the ESX server to have to be disconnected from the network while it switches from a standard switch over to a distributed switch. So while that may not be a very likely scenario that you only have one network adapter, if you had two network adapters, this is actually far more simpler, right? Because then you have a set of network adapters that are teamed up. What you would do in that situation is you would basically create the distributed switch, move one of those uplinks over to the distributed switch. So now you actually have a valid connection from the standard switch as well as from the distributed switch. So now you've got those set up and now you'll move your VM kernel port that you're using to manage the ESX server with, move that over to the distributed switch. There won't be any interruption if you do it this way. And then once that's been moved over, now you move that final uplink over to the distributed switch. That's a proper way of moving things from a standard switch to a, dis to a distributed switch. Use a NIC team in order to do this. If all you have is one network adapter, it's impossible to make the switch without losing connection to the network. And so if you happen to have a small lab environment where all you have is just one network adapter, you can go into your vCenter server's advanced settings, disable rollback in there, and then make your switch over while being disconnected in the network. And then once the, you've been reestablished on the distributed switch, you can go back and turn rollback back on. So it is generally a best practice to keep rollback always enabled. It's just in these um, unusual or you know more specific situations where you might disable it. If, by the way, you have rollback disabled and you cause a problem and you want to be able to roll back, you can do it manually too. So if you make a configuration change on an ESX server, such as change its IP address, change its speed or duplex settings, change its MTU size, you know, those are kinds of things that would cause an ESX server to lose its connection to the network if you aren't corresponding that configuration on the physical networking side. Well, if I had a previous configuration that was working, on a virtual switch, doesn't matter if it's a standard switch or a distributed switch. In our example, we're actually showing if you had a good working management network on the distributed switch and you make a change and that caused it to be disconnected, you have the ability to roll back to the previous good working state. You notice right above the restore VDS, there's also a restore standard switch. So the same applies for that. So if you happen to have rollback turned off, you have the ability to perform a manual rollback. But again, this shouldn't be necessary because by default, rollback is enabled and it's automatic. Okay, let's get started with lab number three, managing our distributed switches. Basically, what we're going to do in this exercise is we're going to perform a health check, remediate the distributed switch issue, and then back up our switch at the very end. So demonstrating several of the things we just discussed in our previous lesson. So what we're going to do is I'm gonna have you create a port group on your new distributed switch devious lab that we created in lab number two. You're gonna create a port group. It's gonna be called PGSA testing. We're only gonna use it for this one purpose, but we're going to create this port group and assign a VLAN to it. 
right? Now we don't have VLANs in our lab environment. So assigning VLAN 10, for instance, is going to cause a port group to basically lose connections to its network. If we put any VMs in this port group, those VMs won't have any network connectivity due to the misconfiguration in VLAN settings. So how would we discover this? Well, if you enable health check, it would discover this misconfiguration. And that's the goal of this exercise, just to create a misconfiguration, have health check discover it for you, and then you'll remediate this issue and uh, have health check validate that everything is proper by taking the VLAN 10 out of our distributed switch configuration. Once we're all done, we'll back up the distributed switch. We'll use the backup in lab number four. So this ends this lesson, managing distributed switches, where you learned how to perform a distributed switch health check, how to back up and restore a distributed switch, and you should be able to explain what automatic rollback and recovering a network configuration. So we'll see you in the next lesson after you complete your lab.